Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Liquid Brain. Basically, I need your help. I think jargons in the bioinformatics field are making the barrier of entry way too high for common folks. And it's making people less interested in this field, even though I find it extremely interesting. So I'm not saying that all jargons are unnecessary and should be eliminated all at once. I believe jargon are extremely useful to communicate a very intense information to a very specific target audience that actually understand what you mean. So I give a few examples here for journal title taken from the cell publisher. For example, LGR5 expressing skin fibroblasts define a major cellular heart tube in sacroderma. So it, it is able to communicate the whole 10 pages article, what they have found, what they're trying to do, and what are the novelty and everything within like a 10 or 20 words title. It's extremely useful for like journal title, like uh, when you want to put in prints, when you put on a website, it is able to really communicate well to who you want this uh, article to be read, right? Because they're not meant for the public, they're only meant for people that there are that have detailed and intense and knowledgeable understanding in this field that you're in. But for there are certain example, for example, I actually found this question on some website asking why DEGs are model and negative binomial, means that we are doing differential express gene. I did make one mistake there myself. Why differential express gene are actually not like model as negative binomial when we're, we are comparing between two samples? And this is the answer where the negative binomial especially in this alternative parameterization described above can be used as, as an alternative to the Poisson, uh, sorry, Poisson distribution is especially useful for discrete data over an unbound positive range whose sample variance exceed the sample mean. So it's, it, it, it makes perfect sense for myself, for any statistician to read this, to understand what they're trying to say. But for people fresh into statistics or just doing some DG analysis, I believe this is extremely difficult to understand. So I actually make a, a graphical comparison in my other video right here on why negative binomial is used, which I feel like is easier to understand for people that are not from this field. Uh, but I believe it is really difficult to try to communicate in a way without using those uh, technical terms like over dispersed discrete data, uh, sample variance and all that. And it is even harder when you have been in the field for a long time or you have been in a field where you are always being surrounded people that understand what you just say. So if you work in a university where you talk to university students all the time, it's harder to communicate the same information going down to high school, uh, middle schools and, and down or even to a general public, which usually are less educated in science compared to a uh, student in the school. So I believe the trap here is actually part of the peer review system. I don't think peer review system is bad for establishing science um, findings or to verify the understanding in, uh, verify the finding in research. But sometimes it, people are always trying to make it sound much more complicated than it is because it's perceived as more sophisticated. It must be better. If I don't understand it, I cannot reject it. So they're phrased in a way that is extremely difficult for people outside to understand or sometimes for people inside the field to actually understand what they are trying to do. So. I think most of the time people, especially in the science and research world, are not trying to communicate well because it's not onto their incentive. There's no reason that they try to write things that sounds dumb, even though it's intuitively correct. And that's what I have always been trying to do. But uh, sometimes it's perceived as less sophisticated and people just uh, and they don't want to look dumb in front of public by dumbing things down so that only a small group of people can understand. I think it's an echo chamber problem, but I think this needs to go if we need to actually push this field forward. So I, what I hope uh, everyone can do in this case is to try to create the shots, uh, explaining your jargons in your own words to, to a general audience, especially for something in your field that you really want other people to understand what you're doing and you know something that you're passionate with. So if you can link people to this video, understand why you're doing this and why you want them to also uh, try to do something similar, uh, I, I'm not going to ask you to tag any friends. I think that's kind of cliche, but if you want to do it, you can do it as well. And there's some example that I believe people can try to try out to try to explain in their own way 
and how you can make people understand. Of course, that has to be explained in the context they're in. For example, OTU is part of the metagenomics and express sequence tag is part of the, the human uh, express sequence uh, analysis and all that, as well as you know, uh, Alperon's and object relational databases, more like computer science and database and the relational databases and man data management and so on. So it, it's not going to be easy if you're trying to explain things in a minute or two. So feel free to take your time, however long you want, however the background you want. Just make sure that uh, you try to avoid anything that is difficult to understand and try to basically avoid using jargons and try to explain all this jargon in a way that people understand and if possible if i get enough feedback and reply i'll try to compound everyone together and i'll try to make a post about it try to actually just we can actually know what's happening out there in the world and learn something that is outside of our own field for sometimes basically that's all i want to say for today i hope to receive some of your feedback thank you so much and yeah, subscribe and like would be nice, but I think the best way to do it if you don't want to make a short is actually just make a comment down below explaining what they are and maybe I can make a short trying to explain what you have, of course, with credit to you. Uh, that's all I want to say for today. I want to thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.